So thank you all for joining us on this wonderful snowy morning. Um, I am Rachel Alice with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. Um, I am so excited to have, well, actually four wonderful people, five wonderful people on the call. You can't see him, he's hiding. So I forgot to count Curtis. So <laughs> um, on the call with us today, I have Chanel, Lydia, and Christina. And then hiding behind the scenes is Nicole. So she's gonna help me on the backside. So you're just gonna hear uh, Curtis, Christina, Lydia, and Chanel chatting away um, due to the nature of 2020 and all that goes on. Uh, we had to do it a little differently this time. So, so for those of you that have joined us for prior Beyond Bow um, cooking seminars. We truly appreciate it. Um, and, and you might remember seeing Sean Allen and Lydia with Christina in the same box. So this one might look a little different. Um, but I think we're it's gonna just it's gonna go over just as well and and we'll be able to have Sean Allen and Lydia giving their tips and tricks the whole time instead of fighting with Christina for the mic. So it's going to be great. Um, <laughs> so uh, for those of you that are asking, if you have your fire going, um, we're going to get, once I stop talking, we're going to get right over to Christina and, and Curtis and get cooking. So um, yes, get those fires going. If you're bear in the weather and, and willing to get out there, we uh, we totally encourage it and excited to see. I know Lori's already gotten a rip roar and fire that I'm looking forward to seeing here in a little bit. But for those of you that have not um, joined us for a Beyond Bow cooking webinar before, um, welcome. We're so happy to have you. This you will find is probably one of the most interactive, low-key uh, places you can you can learn. So um, we do better with the more interaction we can have. So down at the bottom, for those of you that haven't used Zoom, there's a chat feature. Please type in um, anything that's going on. You have questions. There's also a Q&A going on. So if you have questions that you want to raise to the panelists, type them in there or raise your hand, like I mentioned before, and we can call on you and you can talk live with us. So um, we're here to, to make this as, as interactive and as beneficial for you. Um, three ladies and gentlemen on the on video with me here are are your resources. Um, I'm just going to hide in the background and, and make it work. So um, I just want to give you a little bit of info on Bo. So Becoming an Outdoor Woman is a program here in Iowa sponsored by the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. We work in partnership with so many organizations like the Iowa Hunter Ed Instructor Association, all our different county conservation boards to put on a three-day week weekend. So it's um, this year, it's going to be April 30th through May 2nd. It's at Wesley Woods. Um, and we are so excited to have it. We're, we're hoping everything's crossed that we'll be able to have it in 2021. Because um, we love seeing everyone's face there. So that's about we have about 120 ladies for the weekend. They focus on four different um, activities. So four different three hour sessions. So um, Carol, we, we got you on here. We are so happy to have you join. Um, you're just going to be able to see us, but as we get going, if you want to share what you're doing, raise your hand and we'll, we'll turn you over and bring you up and turn your camera on. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I think I'm done with my little spiel. Um, I guess the, the, tail end of it beyond bow we've tried to make these webinars as inclusive and open as possible so if you have ideas on further webinars um, Christine and I have been trying to figure out how to do stargazing uh, I think we're heading in the right direction um, but fingers crossed uh, spoiler alert maybe but um, we are working on some other ones we're looking into some spring foraging webinars um, as well as maybe some um, fat tire biking up in up in the north woods um maybe cross-country skiing is a little bit more fitting <laughs> given the climate outside <laughs> so um that being said if there's something that that you've always wanted to learn about and we can facilitate it in this situation uh we're looking and and um 
trying. So again, for those of you that, that have questions, want to ask anything, Q&A and chat are on the bottom. If you want to come on screen and chat with us, um, raise your hand and we can get you on that way. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm um, going to turn it over to Christina and Curtis there. And uh, without further ado, thank you all. Well, I'll go ahead and just introduce myself quickly. I am Christina Roloff, and I am naturalist for Shelby County Conservation Board, as well as the DNR out of Prairie Rose State Park. And then hold up, Curtis. Yep, and then my name is Curtis Schnack. I'm uh, her assistant naturalist here at Shelby County, and I also kind of fix things and do whatever else I can in the park. And Sean Ellen, Lydia, you guys want to introduce yourself quickly? Hi, I'm Sean Um So sad I'm not there. Um, I self-proclaimed naturalist and just love, I don't know, Christina and I have hooked up and then I became involved with becoming an outdoor woman and I just can't get enough of it. So I like to just get my hands in there. And I'm Lydia and I'm her daughter. And so I'm just kind of along for the ride everywhere she goes. <laughs> and I love so it just as much as everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> So we will have, if you've been on our series of stuff from the last round, um, it'll be just a little bit different today. Uh, typically we have two tablets going, one inside in our prep area and one outside with our cooking area. But since the weather got kind of crappy last night, um, weren't able to get Lydia come up, um, which I don't blame her at all. And so I'm just gonna have to be moving the tablet in and out. We'll be mostly inside. I've got my fire going outside in our grill. Um, luckily we've got it under an awning and we're on the south side of the building. So we hopefully won't hear too much wind. So we're just gonna be doing some basic campfire cooking. Um, hopefully everybody has their fire all ready to go. I got ours going a little after eight this morning and have a lot of some big chunks of wood but also some decent coals going. We're gonna be making five different recipes this morning. Uh, basically all of them but one, we're gonna be using foil to, to cook inside of. And the first one we're going to start with is the Suns Up Hillbilly Trash, because that is the one that's going to take the longest to cook. It could take an hour to cook possibly. So what you will need to do, and this is one step that I did do already, is you're going to need to make three strips of tin foil of the heavy duty foil. They're supposed to be about 18 inches long, but a lot of that depends on the size of your bowl. Because what you're going to do is you're going to crisscross them and put them into your bowl to make like basically a portable wood pan. And you want your foil to stand, oops, sorry, I'm really shaking my tablet, I apologize for that. <laughs> um, you want it to stand about four inches above your bowl rim because you need to have the extra room to allow your, your eggs to expand as they cook. So I'm gonna make it a little shaky again. So none of these recipes that I'm doing today, I have ever made before. So I'm yeah. just right <laughs> Those are our favorites to do. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because it's just fun for us something new than it is to do the old hat that we're just used to that we can do blind because we've done it so much <laughs> so you're using three different layers yes yeah because of course you don't want your eggs to leak out okay. so you kind of line your bowl and make a pouch and then the first thing that you'll need to do is spray the foil with cooking spray your eggs and stuff do not stick. And then we'll need your um, your salt, your seasoning salt. We'll sprinkle a little bit of that in the bottom right here. So now, um, well, and I'm sure that you'll get to it, but do you whisk all your stuff together? Is this something that you can um, prepare? Probably, right? yes, you're going to have to, yeah, you have to beat your eggs, which I have okay. not done. Well, there's a little whisk in that storage tote back there, Curtis. If you want to grab another bowl and we'll do that. So, yeah. And then you also thinking. need to put, so you'll need um, two tablespoons of butter cut into pieces. And so take one of those tablespoons and put that in the bottom of your, your foil pouch too. 
I was just going to say, I know sometimes we try and prepare early, like, you know, we're more going for a weekend and we don't want to spend all the time cooking, cooking, preparing everything. We just want to cook and go like sometimes all preparations beforehand. So I didn't know if that was something that maybe you could pre-do. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I do that too. Like if I do like a lot of Dutch oven cooking and stuff while we're camping, then I do a lot of that prep work right away. Yeah. Cause I still love the cooking aspect of it, but sometimes I want to be participating in other activities well it's all cooking <laughs> yeah curtis is going to get the, the eggs all scrambled up you need four eggs of course and hopefully everybody got the recipes ahead of time or at least the ingredient list and then we will send out the official recipes as well as links to the the recordings once everything is done so is there a number that's like it says how many people it feeds um this one it does not so you I'm guessing, hmm. So it's got four eggs, a half bag of hash browns. I'd say it probably would feed maybe six people. I would say, yeah, definitely. So but one that's thing I did do, but I did not put the instructions as I did thaw my hash browns out just so they would cook faster. Very good, very um, good. Yes, so that is what you dump in over top of the seasoning salt and the butter. So dumping my hash browns in. And you can put your onion and your ham and your cheese all in there and get all that mixed together. So I just bought a big package thing of top ham, just to save some time. So if you did have, just have regular ham at home, of course, we would, I would just chop it up on my own and take it hey, with the kitchen thing. Christina, can yeah. you um, tilt your camera just a smidge? Sure. Um, yeah, if we're using my lovely here, we just got to go like this. Just got to slide it up. I have a coffee cup full of pens that holds my <laughs> hand up. Oops. Is that it better? Works. Yay, yes, that's much better. Thank you. So I just dumped in my ham. I'm going to dump in the onions, and then I'm just going to kind of loosely end, end the cup of cheese and just kind of loosely mix that and the hash browns and all that together. Now my hands are all hammy and... I can't get the bag open. <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> yeah, all the juice from the ham on my fingers. <laughs> so yeah, we only need a cup of this, but you know, I would say you can never have too much cheese. So I may get one of cheese Agreed. is great. And I'll just kind of loosely mix that all together with my hands, which are clean. Um, it's nice because you could actually create a whole lot of different ideas with this. Yes. Yeah. Any, any things that you like in egg bake, definitely. Yep. So then we're going to put the eggs on top of that. And also if anyone's just joining us, we are recording this so that you can go back for future reference. Yep, or if you did not want to sit out in the snow around a fire this morning. That too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got that poured over. And then you can sprinkle it with some salt and pepper just to taste, or more seasoning salt if you would like. Now I'm really sad that I didn't drive there. I mean, <laughs> two hours ago, done what I needed okay to do. By now, by the time you got here. <laughs> yeah, the food will just be ready for me, right? That's right. Perfect. <laughs> just switch the zoom to your phone as you're driving and like tape it to your steering wheel. And <laughs> yes. So, and then go ahead and chop up your other piece, tablespoon of butter. And just sprinkle that on top. Very cool. And then when you get that all done, you're going to want to loosely shut the top. Um, this is a recipe that you will probably want to stop and stir it a few times as we're going along. Somebody just asked if you mixed the onions and hash browns together. Yes, I went ahead and mixed the onions, the hash browns, the ham and the cheese all together, just kind of loosely with my hands and then put right. the eggs over top. Perfect. 
If you hear any little kid noises in the background, my husband is out plowing this morning, so my kids had to come with me down here. And they're currently watching Secret Life of Pets 2 in the other room. Um, somebody asked if you were going to do this in the oven, at what temperature would you do? I would say what, 350? Would, yeah, 350, because I would that's what 350 you really have to Yep. Yep. And probably 35, 40 minutes, and then I would check it? Possibly, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, so then we're going to kind of loosely clamp up the top. And then um, also it says to rotate the pouch a little bit <laughs> from time to time as you're cooking. Um, Christine, not a good rotator. Not for Dutch ovens. I'm not a rotator for Dutch ovens, but this I probably will since we're using wood and not charcoal. Sure, sure, sure. I was not going to let that go. You know that. I know. Well, and that's <laughs> we had a, a naturalist get together on Wednesday and myself and another guy that Dutch oven cooks a lot let it. And we were talking and neither one of us is a Dutch oven turner. And what we found out with that, what he found out about that is with the new Dutch ovens, you really don't need to turn them, especially okay. if you're using charcoal. Because the old Dutch ovens, they may have had thin spots and thick spots where today's Dutch ovens are all completely uniform. So. So you definitely get more even heat distribution. Yes. Very yes. good. Yes, but if you're using coals, you're good. If you're using wood coals, then I would probably rotate because you know you're going to have some bigger coals and some woodwork. All right, I'm excited to see if this leaks. I know, me too. <laughs> the hash browns pretty good, so nice, beautiful. Fire. So hopefully nobody gets motion sickness. <laughs> Curtis, you got a steady hand? <laughs> Trying. <laughs> so I think I'm going to put one of our grates on. We're doing this just right in the grill. Oh, but I just set that oh, it looks so pretty there. So do you feel like, um, Christina, when you're doing this, um, to have your, your coals or your wood like at that nice red fiery yeah. just yeah most of mine are I don't know if you can see how well you can see it or not but I've got there's a few logs that are small but there's also some that are like pan down just a tiny bit okay <laughs> Let's see if I can do this without dropping the iPad <laughs> So our, we do have a fire ring out here, but it's just a little too far to reach with the Wi-Fi. Plus with the wind and the snow, we just figured it'd be way easier to just do it over the grill. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that right over top of the, the coals coals that we have. There's a little bit of fire on, on both sides of it, but. And then you want more wood? We probably should get a little more wood going on here too. That one. Yeah, that should be good, yep. So this one, it says it's going to take about an hour to cook. Um, I suppose if I went ahead and put the, I don't think I'm going to be able to put the lid on because we have a second grate here. So um, we're just going to leave it open on the fire. And that's also why you need to stir it over the fire for sure. In the oven, you may not need to stir it because of course you're going to have heat surrounding it and not just heat right from the bottom. If so you were in the fire pit, wouldn't that, like, do you feel as though you could maybe almost make a, a ring of, of the coals around the outside and, and set oh, it down. Probably. Yeah, that would be, yeah, that okay. would probably cool. work too. Yep. Yeah, leave that one here for now. Okay, we'll go back inside and we'll let that one cook and we'll get the next recipe started. All the other recipes should be fairly quicking. Yeah, it does look like Jiffy Pop. I it like does. That. Love it, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ty. <laughs> So um, I think the next thing that we will do, hmm, what should we do next? Should we do the donuts? We'll do the pineapple surprises. I'm sure my kids are going to be very excited to eat these when we're all done. So the pineapple surprises, you'll need your donuts. For 
some where reason, the by four of them. But hey, that works. That's one for each of us. Yum. We got a little Christmas sprinkles on them. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> And then you'll need to slice those in half. I've got raised glaze, so of course there's a nice little seam there to cut down. Hey, um, somebody wanted to know if you could maybe shut the um, curtain or the the blinds so that maybe it would yes. not be yes. a lot of yes. like There's dark so to light, in. dark to so light. I it up. I did notice the sun was kind of peek out just a little bit there. I can do it with my glazed fingers. <laughs> There, is that better? I think it is for the okay. moment. If it stays consistent. Are we got a little darker yet? I bet we have a towel a little bit. Better? Yeah. I thought that was pretty sure we've got some towels out in the shop. We could probably hang over there. Yeah, so we've no, got I... the bonus cut into half. And then um, you'll need to take your pineapple ring. So you'll take a pineapple ring and put it in between the donut halves. I can have pineapple juicy glazed donuts. And put that right in the middle. So of course this is a big donut so the pineapple ring takes up not very much room, but that's fine. And then you'll go ahead and put the top on your donut. Apparently I did mine upside down, but that's okay too. And then in the middle of it, you're going to put a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of butter, and um, some brown, well, yeah, put it in, oh, maraschino cherry. So, oh, you're right. sorry, my children just knocked out. So then we've got, a little, put a little piece of butter in there. And you're putting the butter in? No, put on the, the dough, sorry. Nope, that's, ooh, okay. I mean, butter and brown sugar, like that's just, that's good um, for me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to kind of cram it in there, which I'm having to do. It's all good. And then sprinkle a little brown sugar on top of that. It's going to stick all to my fingers since I've got donut glaze butter. <laughs> we have a, a bowl for rinsing our fingers. Oh, you're so smart. Right? I mean, you know, it, I'm not there. So. Like a few feet away. But. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a little bit of that. Okay. And then you top that once you get your uh, brown sugar in there with a cherry. Cherry? <laughs> Yeah, it's like a pineapple upside down cake, but with a donut. Exactly. Now I'm going to go wash my hands for a moment because they're <laughs> coated in brown sugar. Okay, this may become a new definite dessert for camping. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Because um, <laughs> it looks easy. Now, if you want to get real into it, like I've been addicted because I'm in quarantine to watching the Great Britain's baking show, whatever that is, <laughs> I'm going to make some donuts like and try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Homemade, so definitely be good. So then you'll need a piece of heavy duty foil. Christina, I like how you're buying that it's heavy duty. What? Yes, this I, one is I, heavy I, duty. Yep. Everything yeah. for this one is heavy duty. Yes. And there is a huge between the two. What was that? I said there is a huge difference between the two. Yes, because I'm assuming with the regular stuff, if you set it right in the fire, it's going to start on fire. Yep. <laughs> so then take your foil and then go ahead and spray that with a little cooking spray too. And then place your donuts in the middle of that. And then wrap them up. And this one, it does say to set directly in the fire. Oh, the wow. Coals. Set it in the coals, at least. We just added wood to our fire, so we'll probably just go ahead and set ours on the grate again. And 
No, it's one, this one that doesn't say, it just says cook them until they're hot. There's no time specific listed. So if you didn't want as much um, um, sugar, I guess, um, I mean, you could even back off to like a, a cake donut if you wanted to keep yeah. it that way or yeah. you could go to a bagel. I mean, to me, this isn't, I wouldn't do this for a breakfast food. It would be definitely more dessert. Yeah. Take all those and then we'll grab the tablets. So we'll take yep. these out for the fire now too. And about how long were they talking for those? Um, this one, it doesn't say. It just says cook until everything's warm. Okay. Okay. So do you think that the brown sugar will then like caramelize? It should. With the butter, it definitely should. Okay. So kind of just maybe watch for that caramelization to happen. Yes. Well, maybe Tom will want to set one start on fire. We're going to set one right on the fire. So I. Here. Okay. So we got that cooking. Is everybody caught up to us? We need to stop just a little bit and make sure everybody is where we are at. Does anybody need a little more time? I mean, I'm not actually physically participating, so I think like you're doing a good time management. Okay. I think I could have stayed with you is what I'm okay. trying to tell. This is weird being on this end. I'm going to tell you that, Christine. Hey, look, Curtis got us a bubble of water, Shauna, look. Yay! <laughs> okay, so maybe, hmm. let me do next. That one's 20 minutes, it says. That one's probably a pretty short one, too. Yeah. Let's do our apples next, I think. So um I bought some ginormous apples. <laughs> uh, so what you'll need to do is partially pour these. So you want to leave a little bit on the bottom, but cut out what you can of the core, but you like I said, don't cut all the way through. If anybody has any of their little apple cores, you could go down as far as you could and then wiggle it and pull it back out. Is just, yes. you know, if you have that handy tool. Yes. And then I can take all these little bits and feed them to my cockroach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only but Christine. I bet everybody else can't say that. So. <laughs> Do you or actually you might be surprised. Things that absolutely uh -huh. loves little bits of apple too, so. Do you have a hissing cockroach? Yeah, I have, I'm down to one, but yes, I do have a hissing cockroach. <sighs> Why did I not know that? I don't, it's in my office, they're right by you the- You did know room. that, because okay, I've held good. it before. Yes, yep. I held <laughs> So I hollowed out my apple nice. Nice. Not, I tried to pick out a softer apple just to make it a little bit easier on myself. That's what I was gonna ask, what kind of apples you chose? Yep. Red um, I think, yeah, they, they're really big, red delicious. So okay. yeah, maybe they would be fairly soft. And then with these, then you will have to get um, a teaspoon of butter, a teaspoon of brown sugar, and then your granola. So you want to mix. <laughs> <laughs> we just had an air paper airplane come flying in. Um, mix together the granola, the brown sugar, and the cinnamon all together. I'll grab a little bowl for that. I'll show you Yum. all kind of inside of that apple. Very um, nice. You kind of see the depth there, just like. And <laughs> nice. And I suppose you could decide how much, how much goodness you want inside there exactly. and carve out. Yeah. yeah, that's why I kind of made mine kind of whitish too, because I love granola. Yes. So mix up the... Other wheat you could even do you think that the brown sugar is like important as far as like the caramelization aspect of it or do you think if you wanted to do just your granola and your butter yeah. i think you, you could just do go that far. butter and um, then also you could add some cinnamon to it absolutely 
I wonder what would happen if you tried to use oatmeal. Oh, that would be delicious. Mm -hmm. Granola and honey instead of the brown sugar. Oh, oh yeah. Syrup. Yeah. Straight from a tree like I do. <laughs> Lid, I think that you would have to make sure that you had um, a liquid. But if you did, like you said, some honey in that with the oatmeal um, and made more like a. It would be like a pie then. Yes. Yep. I'm just dumping some cinnamon in. I like cinnamon. <laughs> and that's yeah. how I cook. I don't. <laughs> Absolutely. And especially if you're gets... camping, that's how we always cook. Yes. And my husband gets really irritated with me too. <laughs> well, and if it tastes really good, how are you going to know what you did? Yeah. It's, it's always fun. <laughs> so Lydia, is this the one you were thinking that we've done before somewhere? Yeah, I think we made these um, at Springbrook at the Beyond Bow in the winter last year or two years ago. Did we do that, Anne? I know you're on here listening too. I don't remember. I can't remember for sure. I didn't like have my butter softened, so very it similar. Very cool. Yep. I just remember an apple full of granola, and it was delicious. Oh <laughs> yeah, I do. We had that in the in the house, didn't we? Yes, because we steamed the apples in the crock pot thingy. Oh yeah. yeah. And if you make granola, then you'll have even a better. Yeah. Better be chewier. I think it's oh, yeah. chewy. Get yourself. And there's so many different types of granola out there. You can make your own home. I love homemade granola, but right, right. Ah, kind of like an inside-out apple crisp. Yes, yes. Yeah. that's what yeah. I was thinking of. Nice. All I remember is that it was delicious, and that's what matters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, just dump it in there. We're just dumping it in with our hand. I'm going to go ahead and How much granola did you use? Um, ours is just regular um, oat and honey, Nature Valley granola. How much? What was that? How much did you put so in the mixture? It's supposed to be three tablespoons per app. Yeah, I think it kind of depends on how big of a hole you put, but that's. So. Well, and, and yeah, how big of a hole, how much you're going to make, and then just stuff it in until you're happy, right? Yes. And I'm trying to sense of uh, the butter's kind of solid. It's not very soft. I'm really pushing it in there to make sure. Packing it good. Yeah. Oops. Dropped a big chunk of butter. Can't have that. I know. <laughs> and then for this recipe, it says you'll want to double up your foil. So you'll need two pieces of foil. And we're going to have nice cinnamony. <laughs> Brown it's sugary be a weird water. Combo of water yes. yeah. I'll give ten dollars to whoever drinks it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna have to raise the price on that. <laughs> um, these recipes. Oh, I didn't grab the cookbook. Um. I have, oh shoot, a bunch of cookbooks. If you happen to be on the last series, it was the same cookbook. So there's like, put a little spark in your ash. There's over a fire and on a stick. While stuff is cooking, I'll probably, I'll try to run down to the, on my office and grab those. Can you also repeat the steps of doing the apple? Sure, so yep, so pour your apple. Make sure you leave a little on the bottom and then mix together. Um, about three tablespoons of granola, one teaspoon of brown sugar, some however much cinnamon you want. Um, and then yeah, the teaspoon of yeah, teaspoon of brown sugar, teaspoon of butter, three tablespoons of granola. And then go ahead and kind of mix those things together and then just cram them into the middle of the apple. Okay. Thank you. That's a really technical term. Yes. It's a technical <laughs> cooking term. And then you'll double up two sheets of the heavy duty foil for these. And we have to spray them or not? Oh. Nope, it doesn't say that you need to spray it. It just says seal well 
And then it said you're supposed to set these on coals for about 20 minutes or until almost tender. And then you're supposed to let them cool five to 10 minutes. So of course you don't run them out. Well, that might that apple to just kind of finish. You know what? We're going to set them in the bowl. And then we can just carry the bowl out. Okay, so we'll take Dude, do you know what? Use a pear for that also. Ooh, that would be great. Right? That would probably cook I, faster, too. I bet it would. But wouldn't that be so good? It would be very good. Okay, I'll take these out of the fire. Uh oh, our foil's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was that? The foil, one of the we stuff. I didn't stick it right on the coals. We had a log that had quite caught but had some coals around it and so, it caught just a little it's okay it's all good yeah i think it'll probably be the yeah, best one be fine. It probably <laughs> it, will be. because we know how much i love burnt food i know <laughs> you're weird like that yeah i know <laughs> okay try to get over so i can get some stick the apples on some cold coals here starting to run out of room Ooh, something's leaking. <laughs> hmm. Can you see which one it is? Um, I think it's the one that was burning. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of like melted butter on the outside. That's probably what was burning was the melted butter. I'm trying to get these in the coals in the coals. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> Ooh, which one's off here? That uh, one. Yep, there you go. Okay. I do smell something. Something sweet? Good. Yes, I smell something. <laughs> How long has the um, the egg bake thing been on? For about 15 minutes. So. I was trying to gauge time. I wasn't thinking. I didn't look to see what time it went on. I did, I did actually remember. I was kind of surprised. Good for you. Oh, good for you. Yep. <laughs> Edge of that donut's a little burnt, but everything in the center is all caramelized. So I'd say that one is done. Dude, can you show us? It's a little burnt on the one edge. So this is the one we started on fire. <laughs> it looks yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Just got one little burnt spot for you, Shauna. <sighs> oh, it smells so good. It, it smells does. like pineapple. I bet like pineapple upside down cake. Mm -hmm. Got some of these other ones. This one I can hear butter sizzling, so. Oh yeah, the, all the butter is like cooking in the bottom and boiling. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yum! So I think these are all done. Good thing Perfect. Done. So that only took what five, ten minutes? Yes, that was cool. Quick. Yeah, very cool. Well, that's nice to know though, because if you're making that dessert and you don't want to have to pre, yes. you can make it last minute and have everybody prepare their own so that they can make it to their liking. Yep. So I'm thinking maybe I'll grab a spoon and stir up that egg bake since it has been about 15 minutes. Did it say on the recipe how apples need to cook? On the recipe, how long? Yeah, that one it said like 20 minutes. Our egg bake nope. is steaming. It looks like I can see a little bit of the cheese. Is, some of the cheese is melting a little bit. I'm seeing a couple little chunks of like scrambled eggs. Nice. So just to repeat, because it was really windy, 20 minutes okay. for the apple. 20 minutes for the apple, yep. Until they're oh, yeah. a little bit tender. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the eggs are getting done on the bottom. So yeah, go ahead and make sure you give yours a good stir if you got yours going. Okay. Stir 
started about five minutes ago. Not that I want to make it difficult, but how delicious would it be if you caramelized mm -hmm. the onions before you added them to mm -hmm. that? It would be. Just saying, you know, for it anybody who is. likes that extra. Yeah. Cooking. If you were here, we would have made you do that. You know that. <laughs> I would have. I would have been like, let's do this. Well, so you better make it next time when we do that. Uh, oh, honey, I will. Like, I'm going to kick everybody out of my salon who even looks remotely sick. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. It was actually my kid this time, so I can't complain. What'd you say about me? So good. Oh. Age. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one looks really good. Oh, wow. Mm. How fun. So then I would I, flip that bad boy upside down. I got to see the bottom side. Okay. Oh, but it's a little bit done on the bottom. A little caramel. But it should be. Yeah. That's yeah. probably just the butter and the brown sugar making yes. it that dark. Yep. This one's like that too. And that, actually the, burnt, the one that actually stirred on fire, the burnt stuff is sticking to the bottom. <laughs> Get these out and onto some plates. Yeah, because that's where it does. It smells like burnt sugar. Yum. Okay, so worst case scenario, if it did happen to burn to the bottom, slice that bad boy off and eat it up anyway. Yep. That's what I'm just going to do with this one here. I'm just going to cut that burnt part off and Oh, and it fell right off, actually. Nice. And um, when you get them. Pineapple juice all soaked into the middle of it. Mm. You'll have to give us a good visual. I was going to say, it smells like a bakery in here right now. <sighs> so, yeah, we just took the burnt stuff off. Whoops, there goes. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, we know this one does not take long at all, then. Right. Like I said, these are all first time we've ever made these ones. So, oh, that might actually, Sean L, you yeah. would love this. It is like so crispy. Yum. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> mm, yep, that's good. <laughs> of course it is. So, in a situation like that, now that you've done it, um, would you maybe set it up? Um, yeah, I would set it up higher. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So Rachel said that I have to explain that I love everything burnt. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I will purposefully. Okay. When I say burnt, I don't mean black. Like I don't want cursing, but I just like it to that verge of where it's the darkest brown it can be before it turns black like popcorn, like darker than anybody else will eat it, but not like charcoal. Yeah. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I mean, we all know you have like pica. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing something and I need that. But yes, I love, love, love all things burnt. I will cook my stuff longer than the average Joe to burn them. And it's a problem. And then sometimes <laughs> we burn brownies on accident. Yeah. <laughs> you can still eat the top. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so back to what i was saying so it like now that you've done this would yeah. you consider moving them to a different place um in your coals i would yeah i would have my um grill grate which is in the garbage outside um has like a second grate that's up higher i probably would have stick it on that one that time because it's it's more about the heating element as as opposed to yeah. the cooking element Cooking. And so, yeah. yeah, we don't need it cooked necessarily. We just need it heated thoroughly. And that, yeah. as long as that heat's rising. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Girls, do you want a donut? Okay, so I need to go ahead and take a bite of the whole thing and give it a try. Oh, and the donuts are so nice. Hey, so mm, yeah. All right, who else has theirs done? I need to know other, I need to hear other people. Christina, you know, you like everything. 
I do. I'm not that picky. <laughs> no, you're not. So I want to hear from others if it's what anything that maybe other people would change too. Since it's our first time, we're we now are discussing what we might change about it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any input? Done and good. Nice. This is the one. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that theirs is almost done. They cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think one thing I would probably do on them is definitely use the cake donut. I think it'd be a little more crunchy. That, yeah. Ooh, Ooh, I like it. Too. Yeah. yeah, it would probably be a little sturdier that way too because these are way softer, more airy. Sure. So it might get like that more um, like pound cakiness, like the moisture yeah. from the pineapple. It would probably absorb it. Soggy, it would get better cakey. Too. Yeah. There you go. Okay, I like that. Ooh, Ooh. So a slice of peach would be good. Yeah, I was just Ooh. thinking that too. Yeah. I was just thinking that too. Any other kind. I think even an apple would be good if you mm -hmm. made yeah. it thin enough mm -hmm. that it could just, just cook. Like then you could have that crunch. Well, then you yeah. could add cinnamon to the brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Which yeah. you could do that for the peach as well. Yes. Yep. So should we do the... Anybody need a little more time or are we doing good? I would say move on to the next only because people are finishing that one. It's not like there's, I mean, all their okay. things should be, so, but let's go ahead. Well, let's do the oranges next. Yay. So good. Somebody said. Oh, so what orange. you need to do if, is take your oranges and cut them in half. <laughs> I like how you're rolling it. I know. <laughs> Get the juice up. Yeah. I know. I always do that once I'm going to peel them. Yep. And then you're going to want to scoop out your insides. Do you get to use the insides? No, just eat them. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Make some juice or eat them up? Yep. Ooh, these are very juicy. I mean, you know, you could, if you really wanted, is juice a little bit of one and make some glaze to put over top so that you have good glaze rather than the canned glaze. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it usually goes Lori I missed it what was it she said they're just gonna watch this one because they'll have way too much food <laughs> right yeah yeah I only let I let my kids eat a muffin this morning I'm like you're gonna be eating food later just eat a, Ooh. Muffin. Uh, a lemon would Ty be says Ty says what if you used a lemon that would probably be really good too I then missed was make a lemon glaze. Lime I've been watching, oh, too much of Great Britain um, show, The Bake Off. Yes, it's a different. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Ooh, oh, now I'm really good. intrigued about the lemon. Yeah, Curtis said a lime. I think oh, yeah. a lime is delicious lime as well. Day. Probably anything citrusy would be good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Grapefruit, even probably, mm -hmm. if you like those. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was just telling earlier. Go ahead. Oh, I oh, yeah. I was just saying pretty much any fruit. I am a fan of the idea. I think it would be good. <laughs> yeah. So um, just a fun thing. If you're by your fire. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you can, if you like squeeze your orange peel over the fire, you'll get a nice little flare up because of the orange oil. Just kind of a fun Stupid drift. A little sparkiness. I don't like oranges. Yep, that's okay. <clears throat> so then, are you like, how far are you peeling it down just to get uh, just I'm the, all oh. the pulp. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, so I've got my one has a hole in it, of course. Perfect. I was going to say there's <laughs> no from that to that one's not as clean. Okay. So what do you suppose happens if you can't get all that pulpiness out? It probably won't hurt anything. It'll just absorb into the That's what I want to flavor into the cinnamon roll. Yeah. It could perhaps make the cinnamon roll a little softer, but yeah. who a little soggy. I was gonna use that word. I was trying to find a nice one. But yes, I agree. <laughs> but to me, I, I don't care about that. I am squirting orange juice everywhere. That's what I was just gonna say. Did you just shoot it across the table? I did. I'm trying to get Curtis. 
Don't shoot his eye out. <laughs> you see we should always say we need to have safety glasses on. Nice <laughs> I did not have any idea this was this difficult. This coupon and all. So, so like when I, Curtis rolled his on the table, I think that that kind of helps pull it away from the the. Um, I did one of mine. Also, yeah, okay. you have to roll one to get so, like, these are the ones I rolled, and this is the one I didn't. So. Okay. Yes, I always I don't know somebody told me to do that a long time ago because yeah. it breaks that uh, actual um, rind. Yep. Right. I would and it would probably help if we were using a metal spoon instead of. That's a what I was gonna say. Real silverware might have played a good part. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> just got a fruit spoon. Yes. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah, it has like little um, things along the the tip of the spoon so that it can cut into it. Genius. Oh, I, think I have a citrus peeler in the house. That would have probably been a wonderful thing to bring down here. <laughs> you should have told me that. Again. <laughs> it's your I first my time. We're all learning together. Yes. Oh, this one's coming out really nice. Look at that. If anyone's making this at home and you're using a real spoon, is it easier than it looks like Christina is doing? <laughs> <laughs> nice. That looks really good. Um, so then here's my next question. When you're doing something like this, you kind of want to really base the size of your orange so that you're getting a big enough one to put that cinnamon roll in. Yes, and I did. I tried to pick out the biggest ones I could find. So worst case scenario, you have a small one, you might have to cut your cinnamon roll in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, make do oh, with what you get. These refrigerated ones don't get very big anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, yes. so we did find some orange cinnamon rolls. Yes. The best part of oh, I didn't even have to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> so remember with the last it's thing, disappointing. Last one we did, exactly what it was supposed to do. We had to like beat on the ones for the last class, if I remember right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have never ever used. Cinnamon rolls out of a can before. I have never eaten cinnamon rolls out of a can before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is an adventure for both of you, and I'm so excited to watch you go through it together. Again, they come apart. So then you just pull them apart, stick them in your orange. Oh, they smell pretty good. So all of you people that are making your food at home, we would love it if you would take pictures and share the food and like your cooking process and how it went for you and everything on the Iowa Bow Facebook page just to get the word out a little bit more. Christina's got them. Yeah. Like the roll. Beautiful. Yeah. That's why I got them. Yeah. Yeah. So we fingers now. <laughs> so good there. Okay. So with these, um, you have to grab another sheet of foil, of course. And you'll spray your foil again this time. And when you wrap them up, make sure you leave some room at the top so the bowl can expand a little. Once again, heavy duty foil. Thanks, Tracy. Have a good day. No, we don't have to double up on it again. Yep, just a single sheet for these ones, it says. And you can do like brownies and cakes and stuff inside of an orange like this too. Yes, that would be so good. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So you're do making like more of almost a domed top, but then crinkling. Yeah, I'm making sure it. I leave plenty of room. Yeah. Okay. So I'm kind of bringing up the sides and crunching them together and then bringing up the other two sides and just kind of peeling them to form like a really loose pouch. So mine looks like that when it's done. Okay. So do you think that it's important and then watching you spray the bottom, do you think that it needs to have any spray on the top so that if it does, it doesn't stick to it? Or do you think that it just isn't going to stick? Because when you're at home, do you grease your pan before you bake your, I'm trying to think. When I make homemade cinnamon rolls, I think I oh, well, then that you would think you wouldn't need to spray it because the orange rind should have enough oil in it. That's what I was thinking too. So I wonder if it's more like so that it doesn't get to the top. Maybe, yeah. Curtis, did you spray a little bit more now this time? Yeah, I tried it on this one to see. Okay, let's see if we notice a difference. Yeah, I'll try to make this one look a little different. <laughs> this one says to set it over a cooking grate over warm coals. So don't set this one in the in the coals. Okay. Over top of them. So do you have pretty good heat on that side? And what was that, Lydia? No, I said, um, do you guys have pretty good heat on that second level? Uh, we probably would. Well, over some of it. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, Curtis. We sound the same. People get us confused yeah, I, every time. I wasn't <laughs> seeing the screen. Yeah, I'm okay. hillbilly hash is taking up most of the grate. I'm going to stir that hillbilly hash up again, I think. Oh yeah, that is cooking good. And how about how long has it been now? Um, it's ten o'clock. Thirty-five minutes. Okay. Half an hour, thirty-five minutes. I think our cheese is getting all melty. Um, some of my eggs are cooking to the bottom, but that's okay. Yeah, that looks like that's coming on nice. Mm -hmm. Did we put butter in that one? We did. Yes. Okay. So it may not hurt to maybe put a little extra in there to help prevent the sticking that at least I'm getting. And you sprayed it too, didn't you? I did, yeah. yes. So I could I may have just not gotten it sprayed or stirred mm. up soon enough too. It is steaming really good. I think well, with this long cooking time, you could probably use some like Crisco on the uh, foil if Crisco is something you like to use or even just spread some butter on the bottom. Yeah would maybe last a little longer than the spray. Well, especially with direct heat, like direct, yeah. that makes it go away faster. I didn't check the exact time we took the apples on. We're going to just kind of tap them with the... Okay, so I'm going to just check them with the tongs. I'm going to squeeze the apples just a little bit with the tongs to see if they feel soft or not. That's not too much that way. That one's a little bit soft. You getting dripped on? Yeah. <laughs> We're melting all the snow off our roof. Off the so awning, yeah. We're trying to avoid getting the camera yeah, wet. Our apples need just a little more time. Yeah, we just might have to move some of those around. Yep. Oh, actually. I think we will need the break for the next thing. So. Okay. Gonna put down, gonna put the other grate on our grill for our last thing we'll be making. So do you have the apples down in the grate or down yes. in the cold? Yep. So we'll have to pull that grate off of course when the time comes. And then the cinnamon rolls are up a little higher, right? Not directly. Um, they're on the same level as the hillbilly hash for right now. So I'm not sure if I'll get enough heat coming up. Well, no, there's not that much heat coming up to the second level. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure all the cinnamon rolls are down on the first level. Sure. 
So um, nice thing is, is if you do have the opportunity to cook in a fire ring, then that's going to help kind of contain that heat a little bit more for you. So then you have control over where you space that heat and, and also that separation that you can create your ovens with. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's a nice thing when it's cold out and not everybody enjoys doing this, but also it's kind of fun to have that, you know, I wonder, I probably could. I can actually there. I can shut my grill. Cool. So if you want to contain that heat, then you can. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But she says it's kind of a cold day here. Yep. And if you were on a fire ring, you could kind of mimic that by taking some more of your foil and just mm -hmm. making a tent over half the yep. fire ring. Oh my gosh, yes. Definitely heavy duty. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you're giving me ideas. I might have to have my kid build me a little hood. <laughs> there you go. He loves when I come up with these great plans. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. <laughs> so the last thing, this is one that I'm kind of interested to try and see how this one goes, is the one that we need our muffin tins for. And I could not find, I have some really old junky muffin tins that are half rusty that we're going to be using for this, this one. Um, but I could not find any binder clips that were big enough to go around both edges to hold it in place. So we just grabbed some wire. So we're going to just wrap the wire around once we get that done. Perfect. So you take your two muffin pans and your cooked bacon and you'll rip your cooked bacon in half and put one piece one way in your muffin tin and one piece the other way in the muffin Can you tin. rotate down just a smidge for me? Oh, thank you. Okay. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> yes, perfect. Actually, I should have done it in this one. This one's, I have Thanks, one of these Curtis. Yep. <laughs> a six and one of these, that's an eight. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that up. Try not to cook this too crispy just to make it easier to put in there. Oh, yeah. And it should probably continue crisping up a little bit yes, anyway. Should sure. Yep. Yep. I know how you feel about soft bacon, Jono. Yes. <laughs> I like it. Bacon crispy. You're not alone. I am the same. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so I know that uh, they make round pieces of bacon. I know. I have some in the house, yes. Okay. Well, and then I was more kind of asking because I've only used strip bacon, but that would be something you could create yeah, more I of I thought that. about grabbing some of that, too, because um, actually there's a, a bacon plant outside of Harlem here, and they make it there. Oh, nice. So every once in a while, somebody will give me a free package of the round bacon, which is awesome for, like, breakfast muffins and yeah. for... Yeah sandwiches and stuff like that so For then sure. the next step here is if you would like to add some spinach to it yeah. <laughs> my hands are so greasy you can put one leaf of spinach in each one one singular leaf yep this is a baby one i'm assuming you like spinach. i love spinach that's what i figured <laughs> leaves here so I'm just going to cover it with <clears throat> and then so since I know the recipe doesn't call for cheese but we've got some cheese left from the other recipe so I'm going to add a little cheese to it too perfect so again this is one that you could create your own concoction yeah um yeah, for me, I think I would probably add like jalapenos mm -hmm. or any other types of spicy peppers would be really good. Yes, it would. So then when you add your egg, you're going to put one egg in each little muffin cup and you can either go ahead and crack a whole egg in there or you can scramble up your egg and then put it in there. Somebody agrees with you on the jalapenos. <laughs> <laughs> or a big old slice of mushroom. That's That'd nice. be very good too. too. Oh, mushroom. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, 
So maybe I'll do some scrambled and some. And see how they turn out yeah, different. Side up. Oh, I put the eggs back in the first. Okay. Like I know I've got eggs. Yeah, I think with like, uh, if you're going to add onion or mushroom like that, I think that would be, yeah, another thing where you'd cook it beforehand just to get a little sear on it. Yep, yep. No, we can eat one right now. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I just threw eggs I wonder if we should have sprayed those. I know if the bacon would seal it, or maybe the enough bacon grease will come out yet. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. I feel like it'll be okay. And it does not say to spray it, but. Well, we will find out then. Exactly. Yep. yep. <laughs> okay. We're gonna scramble these ones. If they don't come out, you can just eat them with a fork. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Just gonna scramble these ones. I can still smell slightly more pineapple in here. <laughs> <laughs> it must have switched over to watching Abominable now. <laughs> Making a mess with these, but that's okay. <clears throat> no good cook has ever had a clean kitchen. Oh, exactly. <laughs> no. If you don't make a mess, it's not going to be good. Ooh, that's a good idea. Um, Heather says you could use the silicone cupcake liners in the pan just oh, to make yeah, sure that, that would be awesome. Yeah. And nothing sticks to silicone. Mm. Okay, now I gotta wash the egg off my hands. Ooh, Rachel says you could scramble your eggs in a glass mason jar with, if you're camping. Yeah, absolutely. You can even just shake the jar, yeah. <laughs> I never even thought of that. Genius. <laughs> Anything to make it easy while you're camping. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to wire these together. I'm actually very impressed with your thought process on this. <laughs> with the wiring it? <laughs> like, you know, do? This is my genius self. We'll zip tie them. <laughs> oh, no. I, got it. I got it after I thought about it, but I'm sharing with you that I thought it. <laughs> which, did, which should be no shock to you, Christina. I know. <laughs> so why are we putting the one on top? I to create a little oven. Okay. So really, if it was sitting on something, you wouldn't have to tie it shut. Probably not. Okay. But yeah, you can technically like say to use those little black and silver binder clips and just clamp yeah. the edges too. Then it's like, well, then I got to thinking first, I'm like, well, we could use a C-clamp. <laughs> but then I'm like, well, they can't, that because then they'll hang down and get stuck in the grate and all that. So then I'm like, huh, we'll just wire it shut. No, I like that. Actually. Um, yeah. Somebody said um, the red and the green and the yellow, like the little bell peppers in there. Oh, would, that would be good too, yeah. Okay, we'll take these out and then probably pull the apples off because it's been long enough. And then those sit for 10 minutes, you said? Yeah, five to 10 minutes to cool a little bit. Oh, it smells really good opening that up now. I'm going to move the oranges out of the way so I can get the apples out. The anticipation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they feel selfish. So. Ooh. This one has melted butter coming out of it. Nice. 
Yeah, the cleanup will definitely be a lot easier if you're just on a fire ring. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Just realized we did not have a bunch of the grill open. Oh, <laughs> made our fire get a little colder. <clears throat> Am I just put the grate on top of the water? Nope, we got dark there. And then how long did it say for those to cook? Um, there didn't say what time. I just said cook until the eggs are set. Sure, sure. Okay. So if you wanted a soft egg center, I can't have the white snot though. Yeah. So I'm, I'll be curious to see. That looks like that might be gone. Wasn't it? Yep. Well, it's 10, 15. I don't know if y'all can see the steam, the steam with the snow out. in the background, but pretty appetizing. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. The onion's a little crunchy, but I think it's gone. So we're going to pull our hillbilly hats off. And did you ever get any leaks from that one or did it stay no, pretty good? Very nice. Hopefully we got enough heat going to cook our last thing here. They're cooking. Not quite done, the rolls, but they're cooking. Are they raising up a lot? Uh, just a little bit right now. Okay. Okay. And I'll grab those apples. Oh, yeah. Right off the apples. There's some. Cinnamon rolls, and we got some eggs here. We got apples that are done. Oh yeah, that's done. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. And did you choose a yellow apple or a yellow apple? Wait, a yellow onion or did you use a purple onion? What kind did you use? Um, I think it was a yellow. It was a yellow. Yeah. No, no, it was maybe white. It was either a white or a yellow. Okay. So, cause that would be something that would change up the flavorings also. Yes. So here's our. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm -hmm. Yes. Had one piece of bacon left, so it gives one of it. So yeah, I'm gonna have to grab a little plate here and bite some of that. It did it stuck just a little bit on the bottom. It's not horrible. Did yeah. it burn? Oh no, look, it scrapes, scrapes right up. Oh, <sighs> Chanel, here's your part right it's here. It's like nice brown, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is Chanel's part right there. I think I am part of the slightly burnt club. Yep. It looks like that on <laughs> the bottom. Okay, that looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis, I'll share. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have a choice right now, Sean. I know, but I'm just thinking, like, if he helps us so out. I'm just going to get her right here that's got the, the slightly <laughs> done stuff there. That looks so mm -hmm. good. Oh, there you find the silver again. Oh, there. Yeah, I was like, I knew it. Yep. So that would be another one. You could add so much to that. Oh, and oh, so oh, gosh, so many good things. Yeah, garlic, bell peppers. 
the more vegetables, the more I like it. So uh, me too. Me too. I never used to, but now now I like cooked vegetables. Oh, I feel good. like a real grown up now that I like. I'll just take that plate, mom. Uh, she did. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So, okay. So let's go back to that particular batch. How many people would you say it would nicely feed? Um, five, maybe six. Probably okay, five in this. household. I'd say three in mine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's what I ask. Cause I mean, for you have littles. Yes. We're bigs. And so like a, we'll a poor. Six. Six. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Yeah, Ooh, that's six. definitely one I'm going to be doing. Yeah, and that was really easy, really easy. Love it. Yeah, if you're doing it when you're camping. Mm-hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. I love. They're just a little bit crunchy. So if you don't like that, you just saute your onions and stuff first or caramelize them. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what but I you would do. also do in a piece of foil, right, Chanel? Yes, <laughs> yes. Or in our butter dish, our butter melter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or your teeny, teeny, tiny new Dutch oven. I know, my little cute baby Dutch it's oven. It's so tiny and cute. It's like a, it's got to be like a three or four inch Dutch oven. <laughs> uh, I love it. Mm. And normally I don't really care for egg bakes with hash browns in, but I like that. Mm. Now, yeah. did the hash browns up at all? Did they what? They, did they brown up at all? No. Like the ones on the bottom. Just the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Which are okay. my favorite bites. So mm -hmm. that's maybe okay. another thing where you could do just eggs and then like cook your hash browns normally in a cast iron skillet on the fire. Um, and then maybe mix them together afterwards. That mm -hmm. would be pretty good too. This is just okay. so much easier. I have a thought. So what if you created more of a flat pouch? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you flipped it halfway through. So then you would actually be doing both sides and you could get that brown. Well, you probably, well, except, well, if you have to leave room for your eggs to expand a little bit though. I still think you could do that though, because you know how like we fold our um, foils for lining the Dutch oven mm -hmm. so that they don't leak. If you were to do that, you could still keep oh, that don't image yeah. and flip, you're gonna, it's just gonna flip to the other side. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm gonna try. Anything you'd change? Just add more veggies. Yep. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah, that one's probably my favorite so far. I'm not much of a sweet tooth, so very cool. like any type of meat in the morning are my preferred. Well, breakfast. I was gonna say tons of protein. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And, and if you weren't a potato person, I mean some people don't like hash browns, you wouldn't even have to put those in, to be honest. Or just yeah. cube up a few slices of bread. Oh, very good. Or cube up a potato. Yeah. Like small. Yep. Because my husband's not a hash brown eater. He's not much of a breakfast food person at all, is he? No, no. Does not like breakfast. Well, should we take a look at the apples and see? Oh, yeah, that is soft. Will you move the, um, the bake? Oh, or, or just move the camera. Thanks, man. <laughs> Oh, that smells so good. That does. Opening those up. Oh, yeah. look at that. A dessert version of a stuffed pepper. <laughs> nice. It is like perfect. Oh, a little that does. butter in the bottom of it. Oh, that smells so good. It, it smells exactly like apple crisp. Yep. Yay. How soft are the apples? Um, this one is really, it's really soft on this side and tender on the other side. Perfect. Oh, that one is really soft. That one's really soft. Oh, that smells so good. <clears throat> and how fun, because you could it's actually use <laughs> a variety of apples. Like if they're in season, um, yeah. pick mm -hmm. some apples before you go on your little adventure. Yeah. We've got a few apple trees out here behind my nature center that have really good apples. They didn't really produce much this year because of the late freeze. Yeah. 
These are delicious. Yeah, these are perfect. Yeah, and I think like you said, like any other fruit that's like an apple, like even mm -hmm. a crisp pear or even a soft pear. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's probably worth it. You might need bowls for those. I feel like a peach could potentially be good too. If you use yeah, if you like got that pit out of there. Cobbler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pit could be the hole. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I feel like it, it would you might have to pre-cook your guts, like the 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 stuff that you shove in it first, because I think a peach would be really like sensitive to cooking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it'll probably brown up a little bit. Well, I think it's just so soft it would cook really quickly. Yep. But if you pre-made the insides, then yeah. And I think the same would go with a pear, pretty much. At okay. least a soft pear. I don't eat pears, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Curtis. <laughs> oh my gosh, those are really good. Those do. Yeah, this is a little more like dessert than breakfast, but that's okay. <laughs> it's got oh, it's got granola in it, so it's fine. And fruit. Yeah, when the saying says an apple a day keeps the doctor away, I don't think this is the way he was thinking to prepare it, but <laughs> it is definitely a tasty way, it looks like. It's never <laughs> too early for ice cream. It's basically milk. It's fine. <laughs> yes, yeah, I like it. It's a plastic knife. It's Oh, and oh, that looks very good. On the inside. Yum. <clears throat> I really want to protect those oranges. Sure can. I'll change angle here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> A big lot of foil in the way. I wonder how hot this is going to be. Pretty hot. Worth it. A little bit before I try. So I'm going to get one of these. I'm going to get a couple of these, these other ones cut up too, just so they can cool a little cool. bit. Yeah. It's cut in half. Oh, yeah. So I bet those would even be very delicious after they had been refrigerated. Oh, they probably yeah. would be. Yeah. <laughs> 